And, you know, and then you're, you're going to dig dogs up dead, too. I mean, I did this for, like, almost 20, probably hard for 15, 16 years. And I know I lost a dog in the ground. I lost two dogs in the ground while I was hunting them. And I saw Tony lose a dog in the ground. So, you know, there's three. But, you know, you could lose a lot more. You could lose a dog every time you go out. Right. So you should avoid hunting. In, number one, you should avoid hunting in sandy, shitty soil that caves in a lot. You, you don't want to, and you want to make sure you got help with you too. You don't want to drop your dog on a river bank that you know the hole six feet deep, and you're not going to be able to get to your dog in time. You right. know what I mean? So you, you want to make sure you got you know proper check it out where you're hunting. Make sure you got enough guys with you, and uh, you know you got to get to your dog. You know, Tony's running a backhoe out to get a dog out of the ground. You, you guys ever have to leave dogs overnight? We never left a dog overnight. We always, I, when I was hunting by myself, I did one time I left a dog under, I had a dog out of the original Willie out of New York, and he was a softer mouth dog, but he was a, he was a great terrier, and he got under a, a barn, and, I didn't, and there was no way we could get to him. It was a foundation. He was under, under a groundhog. I could hear him. So what I did was I left, you know, Pissed on the spot, left my jacket there. Came back the next morning, he was sitting there. All the hide was rubbed off of him. All the skin off the top of his back and everything where he had scraped under that concrete trying to get to the game and just he just skinned himself completely. That's the only time. Me and Tony never left the dog. We always dug him out. We always got him out no matter what. You know, and don't dump your dog in a knotty tree hole set with a million roots in them because there's a chance you're going to get your dog stuck up in there. The game's there, true, but there's game other places too. You know, you got to be smart about Right, be know, smart about be it. Be smart how you hunt, you know, where you hunt because, I mean, you're putting your dog, you know, you're putting your dog. Good dogs are hard to come by. Yeah. You know, real yep. good dogs are hard to come by. And, and, and the dog business. That, that have the complete. Yeah, they have everything that you want, you know. You, you want a nose, you want them to stay, you want them to have some mouth on them. You know, you don't want to, I don't like a bear, a complete bear, but then you don't want a, you know, a hardcore psycho neither. You want kind of a mix between a, a mixer and a, you know, a hard dog and a mixer, I would say. Or even a bear and a mixer. As long as the game, the dog holds the game till they're duck to. Whether he barks at it, jabs with it, or grabs it and holds I had a dog named Davey that every time you dug to him, the game was in his mouth every single time. And we ended up digging him up dead. And the game was in his mouth when he died. He squeezed himself in there, killed himself, and died with it in his mouth. Was it was that the one known as uh, Riviota's Davy? Yeah, yeah, that was Davy. He gave me that dog. Tony gave me that dog. Um, he didn't bark. And Tony didn't like the, the fact that he was completely silent. And I didn't care for it either, but I liked the dog. And he tried to give me the dog, and I didn't take the dog the one time. And we hunted him again. And he, he did. We dug the game to him, and I said, "I'll take, uh, I'll take him." Even though he, he was, I like a little barking, so you know what was going on. But you could tell. I mean, you could hear him down there. And every time we dug to that dog, maybe six times or seven times before he got killed. And every single time he had the game, he 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 had a way of squeezing. That's what killed him. He squeezed himself into a hole and he crushed himself. You know, because he just had such drive to get to the game that. Uh, that that's what happened to the first Patterdale that I ever got. I got from Rob Bates. He was his name was Spike. He was a bigger dog, eighteen, nineteen. Uh, he was out of that Vetzel stuff, hard as nails. He was a machine, but he was big, and he ended up squeezing me and my my dad was actually with me, and we were hunting, and we we got him into a set, and he died right in front of us. He just like somebody hit him with the hammer, jackhammered him in there. It took me and my dad both to pull him out of there, and he was dead, and he was locked on. Mm. And pulled the ground. I shot the groundhog when I pulled him out. He was like under the dog dead, and so I shot him there. But he died right in front of us. So that's something else you got to be careful. You know, your dog can you know die right in front of you. You know. When you guys first started hunting, what did you guys use for locating locating collars? Or there, that, there? Tony, when I first started, I didn't use anything because uh, I I was learning and I I used the old stick method. The old guys used to use that. You know, you stick. You figure the groundhog hole. Is always going to dog leg left or right. right. It may go in straight, but he's going to go left or right. It's guaranteed. He's going to go left or right. So I would use that stick method. A lot of times you poke the dog, move up. You know the dog's ass is right there. So you could pop you another hole right there. You can see him and then work your way. And it was, it was monotonous. And you dug, you know, two more. Three, you dug twice as more. And it was also, you know, kind of dangerous more for the dog because you may not. But I always got to the game. I never had a problem with it. It was just a lot of digging. Well, we, Terry used, uh, um, Tony used Terrier uh, or uh, Ferret Finders. 
Okay. The old school Debbins. The Debbins. And so they freaking get wet. You had to wrap them electrical tape. Then you had to change. You had to make sure you had a bunch of batteries with is you. That, is that the one, the old knocker box? Yeah, yeah. You'd have the old box. You had to make sure you had box in the ba- uh, you know, batteries in the box. You had to make sure that you had extra batteries for the debit. You had to have it wrapped. They get in a do heavy wet. Then they quit working. And so it was like, a, but they were accurate. They were, they were good for locating your dog, but they would be off. Like if there were certain minerals in the ground, or something would set the depth off a little bit. So you could figure you, they were always spot on, like where they were at. But sometimes the depth was sketchy. So you might you might be either you a might little bit above inches, them or to the side yeah. of them. Yeah. So I would always work the spade, and Tony would always work the shovel. That's how we did it. We did it that way for 15, 16 years. I was always the spade guy. So when you're good with the spade, you learn how to dig. you got to learn how to dig, too, when you got a dog. You can't go in there and start hammering the ground with the spade. You break through and kill your dog. Break their neck. I've been with a couple guys that went there and they hit the dog and head lucky they didn't kill him because they're going ape shit and they're digging crazy, you know, right at the hole. You got to feel the ground. You got to learn how to dig down there. And you got the ground will change as you dig. You can feel it in the shovel. It'll start getting thinner. Or you listen. You'll dig and listen. You'll hear hollow. Yeah. You'll hear hollow, or you'll hear the dog. You'll be right. If you're right on top of the dog, you're going to hear the dog. Or feel them. Yeah. So slow down. And then you, you, you start, and you always make your hole. I would say two to th- at least three times the size you need, at least three to four. That way you can get in there to work. You got plenty of t- you know plenty of time. You don't want to dig some little asshole. You know, yeah. you're not using a postal digger. You know what I mean? You need yeah. you need three to four times the size of the hole to get to the game, and 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 make sure you got a nice wide circumference that you can at least get one guy in there to work, and you know and take turns digging, man. You know, don't panic. I mean, we've had six, seven, eight foot digs where a dog. Tony would always, he, you know, he always had good, he'd always worry about his, you know, you always worry about your dogs, you know. But we always got a dog out. We never, we only ever lost one or two dogs, and we always got the dogs out. We just dug steady. Make sure you got plenty of water and Gatorade to drink. Hydrate and just go at it, man, and just go until you get your dog, you know. I mean, but, you know, you got to make sure that, uh, uh, now, like now they use the avalanche collars, you know, technology is a lot better than what it used to be. Those avalanche guys, you're finding people 100 feet buried in the snow, yep. and they're awesome, and the batteries last longer, and they're waterproof, and you don't have to worry about that shit getting wet. And then, you know, sometimes the old squawk box will start making funny noises. But, I mean, they work. Tony was really good with it. We always we always found the game with them, and that's all we ever hunted. We never had any of the new stuff. Um, we always used. You guys never did above ground at all? Very little above ground. Maybe only to show a pup something to see, you know, like a box, uh, a young pup, just to let them see right. what, what's, you know, if they're interested. If they got any, if you show a dog something in a box, especially a coon, coons hate dogs, dogs hate coons. A coon hates a dog. Every hair on his body will stick up when he sees a dog. He just can't stand a dog. If, you, if your dog don't get fired up on a raccoon, there's a good chance that he ain't going to make it. Because, I mean, they... Uh, Ain't nothing fired the terrier up like a, like a coon, right. or vice versa. The coon just sees a dog and just, you know, he starts hammering the cage, and he wants to, and that should get you at least interested, you know, and, and so you use it as a tool like that. And, I mean, there's nothing like, we barn, we, we did some hay hunting and barn hunting, but the problem with, like, you hunt hay and stuff, you got to make sure that you got to, that, that the farmer's willing to move the hay for you. And that, yeah, he's, round that he's careful moving the hay, that he don't drop it and crush your dog. You know, because your dog gets up under three tons of hay, you ain't getting them out. No. You, you know, and if you've got a hard-ass dog, that's not. if your dog will go in there and he'll come out and leave, that's not a terrier, man. I don't care if that dog's hunted before. Your dog should never pull off the game unless, one, the, do- the game is dead, or two, the dog is just completely shot where he's, like, ready to heat stroke out. Or, like, he'll... You can't knock a dog if he shuts down because once they heat up, your body shuts down, your function shut down. So you can't shoot a dog or put a dog down or go nuts because the dog quick as he's you. You got to put the dog in a spot to to succeed too. You know what I mean? Right. Like it's got to you 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 have to make sure that you know you, the dog's hydrated. You got to make sure that um, you know you're hunting a ninety degree day. <laughs> You know, it's a pretty good chance you and the dog are going to get hot. You know with, what I mean? With a, with a lean dog. Already. Yeah, with a lean dog with no fat on him. And they're burning muscle now. And once you start burning muscle, that's it, man. That's a wrap. You're done. That's why your dog freezes to death in winter. That's why you, you fatten your terriers up in winter for a couple, three, four extra pounds. So when you burn fat, whether it's cold or heat, uh, 
you're not doing damage. But once you go into muscle, that's it. It's a wrap. The dog's either going to overheat or freeze to death, you know, because they got nothing there. You're burning up everything, you know. Right. So, you know, those are the most, you know, the most important thing. And then don't rush. Like, the English don't rush. The Europeans are much more patient than we are with dogs. Like, that's another big problem. Guys are trying to get a dog out there six, seven, eight months old getting them tore up you'll ruin a dog like the english they won't even a lot of them won't even mess with the dog till they're 18 months old like they, like they have a, so much more patience like they're definitely not doing nothing until the dog's a year old other than yeah. no hunting aspect yeah, other than no, recall not and let them get, just, yeah you can work with your dog and get them to come to you and, and and get them familiar even take them out on a leash around other dogs while they're working let them watch but you don't let the pup go down there and get the hell knocked out and smash to pieces because you done ruined it all oh, this dog's garbage no you ruin the dog because number one, you didn't let the dog mature. He's not matured out enough. And, and you can eat like we would take young puppies and let them run. Like if you got a cool dog that would run, like Bix was iffy. He wasn't real big on pups. He might tolerate. He would tolerate them if they didn't jump on him and stuff. And if they did, then he tune them up, you know. And then normally they would learn.